It's been a long journey. It's dark by the time I get out of the station. A cold breeze blows and suddenly I want to go home. This is a ghost town. It's certainly lonely enough to have earned that name. Despite my reluctance, I quickly remember why I came here. To fulfill her wish. It's a promise I have to keep. I whisper to myself. I've come to see you. It's been my dream to dream. Lately I've been sleeping all the time. But I haven't dreamed at all. I want to dream. I want to escape from the reality and go elsewhere. But no matter how much I sleep, the world of dreams just won't welcome me. Have I ever had a dream? I'm not quite sure myself. And thus I'm on the precipice of awakening. My body slowly floats up from the darkness of dreamless sleep Reminding me that I do have a body, and I'm not just part of a puddle of dream goo. But I want to sleep longer. I grab a hold of sleep's tail and I try to sink myself back into the goo. When I let out a yawn and open my eyelids, I recognize the sound of a ringing phone. So that's what woke me up. That trifling realization sparks flying within my brain, instantly casting aside my drowsiness. I've woken up once again. My heart feels cold, heavy, as if someone has poured icy water into the empty hole in my chest. I look outside the window. It's almost dawn. Everyone's starting to go home. The air is hurried and restless, but also somehow satisfied and overflowing with hope. And then my heart gets another degree colder. Let's go. I quickly grab a change of clothes, put on my coat, and head to the door, the door leading out of my one-room apartment. I wince at the cold sensation of the metal doorknob when I turn it, once I walk through the hall and down the stairs and the door leads outside. It's the same outside as ever. Thick snow covers the ground like always. Good thing I brought my boots. A cursory glance of the nearby brick fence reveals graffiti in a language foreign to me. Behind it, in the distance, are buildings covered in pastel, candy-like colors, except they're now faded, dull, and ambiguous. There aren't many tall buildings. What does stand out, though, is a cylinder thrusting forth from the middle of town, as well as a peculiar silhouette of a church in the distance that almost looks like it's got an onion on top. In any case, I've got the feeling that this isn't the place where I belong. This is a ghost town. Someone decided it'd be called that. Or rather, it's all anyone's ever called it. It's a ghost town, after all. There's not much else here, so if you're not going to name the town after its inhabitants, what else are you going to call it? It's ghosts that live here. Or rather, that's all anyone's ever called them. I think that's the only thing they're comfortable calling themselves since they live forever and are active at night. They really are ghost-like in that sense. But I guess since the like part is off-putting, they've settled on straight up calling themselves ghosts. Naturally, I'm a ghost myself. As dawn breaks and the ghosts go home, I head out into the ghost town. The horizon's starting to turn blue, so I'm sure it'll be dawn soon enough. I love this time of night, especially the sky. I do realize that I'm kind of basic for liking something as commonplace as the sky. But watching the pitch black expanse gradually fade to navy and then to blue makes me feel somehow both excited and relaxed. I take a step forward and get confused. Why was I sounding so gloomy? I often space out and lose track of what I was thinking. I've been like this for longer than I can remember. I feel like a broken machine. 
If only I could keep these sad thoughts away. Not once have I ever been able to stop them. I start digging through my memory and try to remember what started that gloomy train of thought and walk outside, half asleep. My feet just started walking on their own. Someone once said that the subconscious part of our mind is larger than the conscious one. I pass through the small gate of the similarly small apartment complex. There are many footprints left in the snow, but they're all footprints heading home in the opposite direction that I'm headed. It seems like that lonely thought has set my memory into motion. I remember now, once again I failed to dream. Then I got a phone call from that girl which woke me up. I couldn't sit still, so I went outside. Huh. I wish I didn't remember that. But I suppose when you've forgotten something, it's human nature to try and remember it. The need to remember may not be at the top of the hierarchy of needs, but it's definitely pretty high up. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't, I mutter to myself as I tread through the snow. When I reach the road, the snow has already been cleared, making it much easier to walk. There's not another soul on the road, but I can feel the gazes of a ghost from inside their buildings. I can't say I like it, but it's better than seeing them face to face. There are many ghosts in this town, but as someone who currently doesn't have any friends, my one and only hobby is to walk around town early in the morning like this. It's nostalgic, melancholic, and yet somewhat exciting. That's how I always feel when I go for these walks. I walk through this shabby backdrop of the city streets until I turn the corner, and the scenery changes ever so slightly. I've reached the plaza in the middle of town. There are benches placed here and there, as well as the signboard of a cafe with a full view of the plaza. But it's not exactly a place with a calm, relaxing atmosphere. And that's due to the overwhelming presence of something that's the opposite of calm and relaxing. In the center of the plaza is an indiscernible stone wreckage of what probably used to be a fountain and sticking out of its gigantic metal cylinder with fins. It's been there for ages. Its silhouette is simple and clear. So too is its purpose. Destruction. Complete and utter destruction. There's no mistaking it. It's a missile. I have no way of knowing what sort of missile it is, but the fact of the matter is that it's a missile. Nothing more. Nothing less. I don't know how long this town's history goes, but ever since it became a ghost town, the missile's been there, apparently. Since it hasn't exploded, it's probably a dud. And strangely enough, the missile's packed with the names of the town's ghosts etched all over its surface, like some sort of memorial. Naturally, my name's on there, too. I have no memory of writing it there, and yet there it is. Like a signature on a shady contract I've been deceived into signing. Maybe I'd be a little proud to have my name on here if I liked this town, but since I don't, it doesn't make me happy at all. Instead, it makes me feel like I've been bound to this depressing place. So if anything, I find it disgusting. <laughs> I take two or three steps back and get a running start and give the missile a good kick. Specifically, I aim the spot where my name is written. Someone speaks up from behind me. You idiot, what if it explodes? Shocked, I turn around to see a red-headed girl I recognize. She's a person, rather. A ghost I'd rather not run into. Yeah. That's one thing I haven't forgotten. What? It's not like I did anything. She may not have done anything, but I have, so I don't know what to say. Obviously, I'm not expecting her to do anything in retaliation, and it's not like I hate her or anything. But I don't know if what I've done, maybe, was some kind of taboo. Oh. So all I can do is let out a pathetic groan. Hey, wait. And I turn around and make a break for it. I run shamelessly, waving around my arms and legs. Anya, that redhead, appeared right behind me, so I have no choice but to make a loop around the town that's roughly shaped like a circle in order to get back home. I try to run fast, but my body just doesn't feel like it. I keep tripping and almost cry every time, but before I realize it, I'm back home. When I close the door behind me, I finally snap out of it. I can almost feel the wind blowing through my stomach. Now that I think about it, I haven't eaten anything in a long time. Well, it's not like I'm going to die or anything. When I toss my coat off by the door, it starts melting from the bottom hem up. Like when an orange peel eats through a piece of styrofoam. 
It bubbles, melts, and forms droplets. Ugh. The boots I toss by the bed melt too, leaving behind useless heels and soles. Oh. And by the time I toss myself onto the bed, even my feet start to melt. Even ghosts feel pain. Once the skin melts off, it exposes muscle that gets dry and stiff upon contact with the air. It hurts. The smallest flicker of air in the room causes me unbearable pain, as if rubbing irritants into open wounds. Ghosts can't survive the morning sun. The reason I kept tripping over myself on the way here may have been the result of losing part of my leg muscles. Thinking about that possibility helps distract me a little from the pain. But it's not as much of a problem as it may seem. It's not a big deal, really. Nothing dies in this town. Just leave it alone for a while and everything will be back as it should be. To sleep is to temporarily lend your body to the darkness of slumber. By the time I wake up, my body will be back to normal. My legs will have healed and it won't hurt anymore. Hopefully. This shirt hurts. I speak up even though I know there's nobody here to respond. Well, it'd be nice if there was somebody to respond. Someone to sympathize with my pain. Maybe I'm a little lonely. Did a teardrop fall into my pillow or was it just my imagination? My eyes fall shut before I can find out. 